Welcome to Zcast, everybody. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm uh, uh, back for another thought leadership video. Uh, I'm your host, and I'm joined by Moinal Khan, VP of Product Management for Zscaler. Moinal, why don't you say hi to everybody and uh, just tell us how you're doing? Thank you, Zias. Uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, hello, folks. Uh, my name is Moinal Khan. I'm VP of Products uh, at Zscaler, responsible for all things data protection. Uh, I've been with the company for about three years now. Uh, before Zscaler, uh, I have been spending, I would say, last 20 years focusing on data protection and data breaches, worked at uh, different companies in the Bay Area. Yeah, and we're going to talk data protection. Before we start, though, I just want to give a quick shout out to eWeek, my media partner. All Zcasts are done in conjunction with the eWeek he Speaks program. Uh, now, as I mentioned, we're going to talk data protection. And, Moinal, you know, the world has changed a lot because of the pandemic. We've talked a lot about how it's changed the way we work and, you know, the way kids learn and things like that. I think one of the things we really haven't talked about, though, is uh, that's, that's kind of flown under the radar is data protection, right? We As we move people home uh, and into this hybrid world, um, we it's uh, it's we're putting more data in more places and, and we're heavily leveraging the cloud. And so in a lot of ways, a rethink of data protection is needed. So can you talk about that and how companies should be thinking about data protection today? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you are absolutely right. The world has changed. The world of data has changed with the adoption of cloud applications, right? Um, you know, uh, the users, uh, you know, they're using different random applications on the web today. Every organization, they're using hundreds of SaaS-based services. Um, some of them are corporate approved. Some of them are not approved. Um, and then at the same time, there is a lot of lift and shift. Applications, um, are, you know, companies, they're hosting applications in public cloud infrastructure. So, um, you know, again, the paradigm of data has changed. It's fully distributed. It's fully in the cloud today. Now, uh, one of the interesting things uh, about uh, SaaS-based services, um, uh, your users, they, they love these applications. They can, um, they're very high, you know, collaborative. Um, uh, the users can access them from anywhere. Um, and uh, these applications make them productive. So more and more users are going to be using more cloud applications, right? And, and that's kind of like imminent today. Now, when you think about IT, the security team, they have a different challenge. Um, in the world of cloud, they can no longer be a sledgehammer. Uh, so what they're thinking about is how do I empower my users so that, so that they're, they're more collaborative? And, um, and, 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 and you know, because of this, you know, the goal that the IT team and the security team has, again, the biggest challenge that they're focusing on is fully distributed data. Data is no longer on-prem, it's everywhere. And people are accessing from um, you know, all locations. So, so, so again, when you think about how do you secure the data, it has to be done very, very differently. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the traditional hub and spoke security, castle and mode security no longer works. Um, yeah. you, know, you need to have kind of like a, a very distributed service edge where you can see users' traffic at all times from all locations. I think a good way to think about that is, you know, what, what hybrid work and cloud did is it made the world more dynamic and more distributed. And so that castle moat model was very rigid, right? And, and uh, kind of brittle. So you have to have a data protection strategy that mirrors the kind of world that we live in today, which is, like I said, highly distributed. Now, what I think is Zscaler, Zscaler was really a pioneer in leveraging the cloud to deliver security. So how does how is Zscaler leveraging that cloud platform to deliver data protection? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, you know, since day one, uh, the 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 way Zscaler thought about data protection is is very different than um, you know what we have seen in the market from other vendors. Um, uh, just about eight eight years ago, uh, you know, people started talking about um, CASB, cloud access security brokers. Um, you know, at the end of the day, what they were talking about is you need an overlay proxy, you need an overlay data protection solution. Um, Zscaler, from day one, we believed in a platform strategy, right? Um, you know, the DLP, CASB, all the all the data classification techniques that people talk about. 
um, we said it needs to be fully integrated with the platform and, and, and that strategy has been going very well because if you kind of like look at what Gartner has done recently, they merged a bunch of MQs into a single MQ called Secure Service Edge, right? At the end of the day, Gartner is saying, SWIG, Data Protection, CASB, ZTNA, all, uh, all have to come together. And that's exactly what we have delivered 12 years ago, right? So, uh, you know, uh, again, from solution perspective, how do we solve this problem? Uh, to protect data, to protect organization from data breaches, step number one, you need to keep the bad guys out. So you need to have a very strong security play where you are focusing on external threats. At the same time, uh, the capabilities that we have built uh, around DLP and CASB, they are very much focused towards insider threats, right? Um, once in a while, you need to deal with these disgruntled employees. Um, when people are leaving the company, they usually take some data with them. So you need to think about that situation. At the same time, we see a lot of accidental data loss. So uh, everything that we have built, it's part of the Zero Trust Exchange platform. It is not an overlay proxy. It is not an overlay CASB, which makes us very different than other vendors um, uh, you know, into this space. Yeah, I saw actually that uh, the MQ that you're talking about, and I saw the Zscaler was a leader in there. So congratulations on that achievement. Now, um, it, it, DLP is an interesting technology because it's been around a long time. And when I talk to companies about it, a lot of them have uh, kind of shied away from it because there's a lot of noise and a lot of false positives. And so, you know, if there's too many false positives, in fact, you, you can't ever actually find, you know, the real breaches. And so the way Zscaler does DLP, how do you handle all of the, the, the traditional noise and false positives that uh, the traditional legacy systems, I guess, if you will, uh, would, would actually give. Yeah, um, you know, the step number one, you need to first focus on contextual DLP. Don't, don't go straight into regular expressions and custom dictionaries and, and predefined dictionaries, right? Um, those are usually, uh, uh, you know, very false positive prone. Um, so, uh, what we recommend is first focus on contextual DLP. What does that mean? Um, focus on the file types, different type of files that are leaving the premise, right? Why my users are uploading encrypted documents to a random website? Uh, why I'm seeing hundreds of office documents going into an application called pdfconverter.com, right? So those are the things that, that, that people should be first focusing on is contextual DLP. Where is the data coming from? where it's going, what kind of activities that are happening into these cloud applications, that's a great start, right? Then when you, when you uh, go to the next step, which is, you know, now let's inspect the content, let's look at the file, let's look at the structured data and unstructured data, the traditional approach has failed, right? Uh, the, the traditional DLP vendors, their primary solution was all about regular expressions. You know, you need to hire a 50 people DLP team who wakes up every morning and keeps writing those complex regexes, right? Um, so the approach that we have taken is uh, in addition to all these table stakes, like you, you define predefined dictionaries and custom dictionaries, but how do you introduce automation in data classification so that, you know, uh, A, uh, you do not have a lot of management overhead, and B, you cut down the noise, uh, you cut down false positive, right? So, um, you know, we, we are using uh, a lot of, um, you know, ML and AI uh, when we are trying to classify the, the data in addition to standard regular expressions, but also at the same time, we have introduced some of the very advanced data classification techniques like, um, um, uh, you know, exact data match, uh, index document matching, OCR. So with those advanced classification techniques really allow us, uh, you know, to automate that whole process and uh, reduce a, a very large number of false positives. So you mentioned OCR, which is uh, optical character recognition. Can you, uh, you know, drill down on that and explain why that's important for DLP? Because I think yeah, that's fairly unique to you, correct? That is correct. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, you know the OCR. Uh, you know, again, it's 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 uh, powered by you know uh, heavily powered by ML and AI. Uh, the entire OCI library that we have designed 
it, it, it utilizes a lot of uh, machine learning algorithm. Uh, at the end of the day, what OCR is solving is uh, in today's world, um, people take a lot of screenshots. You know, when when you have to deal with a uh, malicious employee, a disgruntled employee uh, just about to leave the company, uh, sometimes they're taking screenshots uh, with their phones. Uh, sometimes they're trying to exfiltrate um, data with embedded image files or handwritten text and, and, and so on. So what uh, OCR really allows you to do is go inside that image file, extract the data, and then do DLP on the data so that you can uh, you know, protect sensitive data and intellectual property, right? So, so again, very advanced uh, you know, classification techniques. Uh, you know, a lot of screenshots today, a lot of image files today contain sensitive information. It could be source code, PII data, PCI data, but OCR is, is able to detect that. Uh, again, using that that heavy uh, ML and AI. So even if somebody takes a screenshot, um, you know, a Zoom session or something like this, you would actually be able to find that. That is correct. Yeah. Yes. So if someone is taking a screenshot and then uh, attaching that screenshot with an email to his personal email or trying to upload that screenshot into their personal Dropbox account and OneDrive account and G Drive account on the wire, we will be able to detect it and we will be able to block that transactions. Yeah. Fascinating. And you also, you, you, you mentioned artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, are there other ways you're using AI ML for data protection? Yeah, yeah. So, so the very first thing we did is when we built uh, predefined dictionaries to catch industry standard classifiers like credit card number, social security number, uh, you, you know, and, and bunch of other predefined dictionaries, some of those standard classifiers were built using regex and pcre engine right now it does create sometimes it does create false positives so in order to cut down the noise we also used ml and ai when we were designing other type of predefined dictionaries i will give you an example if uh, if if you are in the medical industry every healthcare company uh, their patient patient record id uh, patient documents and you know, those those you know varies right uh, differs from each other right so so there is no standard loon check or checksum for this type of data. The only way you can really help this healthcare organization is uh, is is when you start using um, you know AI and, and and ML. So we have heavily utilized um, machine uh, machine learning and. And, and AI algorithm to build these predefined dictionaries. We have used uh, different term frequencies, inverse term frequencies. We did a lot of document clustering, uh, you know, to, to cut down the noise within the predefined dictionary. So that's one part of it. Um, the other part is when we did data classification using very advanced technologies like OCR, we used um, ML and uh, AI. And then the third part, which is even more important, is um, when we focus on end user behavior analytics or user anomalies, that's when we are also heavily using machine learning and AI. Um, you know, just to kind of like give you an example, uh, uh, if an employee is leaving the company and then we see uh, an excessive amount of download, uh, it, it, it's a clear indication that the employees trying to steal steal some data when they're leaving the company, right? So, so again, we are benchmarking every single user's their behavior, and any time uh, there is a drift from their normal behavior, that's when our uh, AI and ML will kick in and and identify those anomalies and then trigger alerts and take different type of actions. Yeah, that's uh, and, and that actually supports the move to the cloud even more because traditional on-prem systems wouldn't have the capacity to actually do the AI ML algorithms needed to find those things, correct? That's right, that's right. Yeah. Again, yeah. You, you can only be successful uh, with ML and AI when you have large amount of data. And if you think about Zscaler, we are dealing with 200 billion internet transactions a day. So across the board, we have a lot of data. We are leveraging this data. We are building analytics and so on. Yeah, well, and you have the processing capability in your cloud that you wouldn't have an on-prem system. So now, now, when I think of DLP, if somebody says DLP to me, I think 
large teams, I think policy tweaking, I think continual ongoing management and a lot of overhead. So convince me I'm wrong here. Uh, yeah, you are absolutely right. Like that's that's really the old school way of doing data protection and DLP. Many organizations they try to do it, they burn their fingers, um, and they kind of like you know stayed away uh, from it. And I've talked to many enterprise customers. They you know they will say, hey, I do not want to touch DLP with a ten feet pole, right? Because because of those noise and then false positive uh, that the management overhead they had to go through now. Um, the the recommendation that we do uh, or we make, um, you know, the DLP can be. These are not just features that you just turn on and you are done, right? When you think about data protection, it's a journey. Um, you know, you have to um, you re- really have to take the journey, uh, and then you will feel uh, uh, you know uh, much more secured um, uh, if you take that approach. So so. Uh, when we sit down with our customers, our prospects, um, our professional services, our SMEs, um, we always tell them to take a crawl, walk, run approach, right? Um, and then our script follows five simple steps. So we tell them, if you follow these five simple steps, then you should feel pretty good about your data protection program, um, um, you know, uh, literally within 90 to you know, um, you know, 160 days, right? So, so, so we kind of like take them through uh, different steps. Step number one, do you have the right visibility, right? Do you have the full visibility, right? And uh, if you think about Zscaler uh, architecture, we are at the right position to see all your internet bound traffic, everything is going through us. So step number one, we start with full visibility. Second is in our visibility, uh, you know, if it shows that your employees are using a lot of heavy, risky applications that are not co- corporate approved, you should just block those applications. Step number three, uh, focus on password protected files, encrypted files, zip files, because again, if an employee is trying to steal the data, most likely a smart user will zip up a bunch of sensitive data and send it out, right? Step number four, um, In today's world, the number one data exfiltration point is personal cloud storage applications and email applications. So focus on what kind of data people are uploading to their personal Dropbox and Box and G Drive. Focus on what kind of attachments are going out with Yahoo and Hotmail account, right? And then step number five, which is the last step is the data at rest. The data, your data that is already sitting in the cloud do that data have uh, any exposure out to the world, right? So, so again, we kind of like help them through that journey, simple five step, steps. And I have seen many organization, they feel pretty good about their overall data protection program when they follow this, follow this model. Again, crawl, walk, run is the best approach to take. Don't try to solve world's hunger in day one. That never works. Yeah, I often liken that to uh, uh, you know thinking of these IT projects as you know chip shots, not moonshots, right? Any, anybody can handle one step or two steps, but if you think about the end state, you can almost paralyze yourself. So I think breaking it down with those five steps was great. It's, it actually makes it doable for people. So uh, thanks for that. Uh, anyways, uh, I think uh, with those five steps and those recommendations, we're going to wrap up here. Uh, Moinal, uh, you you accomplished your task. You convinced me that. Uh, DLP isn't this long, laborious process that's going to consume all my security team's time. And it is actually something you can do today. And more importantly, it's something you need to do today. I, I think, the, uh, the again, this trend of hybrid work is just pushing more people into more places. I think this, there's been a huge rise in, um, in the use of consumer apps and, and, and shadow IT. So, uh, so thanks for that. So on behalf of Moyle Khan, VP of Product Management and Zscaler, I'm Zias Caravelle saying thanks for watching. Don't forget to click to subscribe and I'll uh, see you soon on another Zcast.